All right, back again with another weekly power ranking show using analytics. Uh, the way this works, if it's your first time, is this past offseason, I did a study figuring out how much each positional group is worth. Basically, you know, how many wins do they equate given how many, uh, you know, points they uh, give up less or points they score more given where, you know, how good the position grouping is. Instead of just using my own opinions on where those position groupings are, I'm using Pro Football Focus's grades. Not perfect, but it's it's something and it's a baseline to go off of. And I think it makes them for some interesting stuff. And half the reason is then, you know, I'll give my own opinion on what I agree with and what I disagree with and things of that nature. Think of this as less of a, you know, in stone power rankings thing and more of a which teams have gotten unlucky and which teams have gotten lucky so far through halfway through the season. Now we're halfway done. Also, last thing. Kickers, that's the only thing that isn't used by PFF grades. That is used by kicking percentage. Not the perfect way to do it. I did it different when I came up with my evaluation for how much kickers are worth. But again, uh, it's a baseline. It's something to go off of. So we're doing it that way. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump into it. So here we go. We're starting from the bottom and working our way up. A couple of new things to talk about. So uh, if you're new here, first off, if you missed last week, uh, that chart on the bottom, just something to help you uh, you know, follow along. Basically, if you look at, you know, for example, for the Jaguars uh, on the top left corner, their O-line got gets 1.14 wins. So then you can look at, you know, the bottom chart. Uh, that means that they have a tier three offensive line. That's how it works. Tier one through five. The new thing is all the way over to the right. Uh, I've done this once before, but uh, there's another stat in there that I haven't done before. Uh, you have the total wins, which means how much wins are you projected if you continue th playing this way through all 17 games. I also have WE, which stands for wins earned. That means how many wins have you earned so far through the games that you've played, which is either eight or nine, depending on if you've played your bye week already. Uh, ACT, A-C-T, that's just abbre an abbreviation for actual. So the actual amount of wins that the team has. This is a, you know, a very true stat this is something you can't uh, you know not up for debate this one so how many wins you have that's the final one I could have just wrote wins uh just realized that now so maybe overthought this a little but whatever we're gonna go with it so at the bottom the Houston Texans are not good um you know they only have one win and they've overperformed uh they currently have only earned 0 0.6 wins you look across the board not a ton of good stuff whatsoever. Run defense has been solid. Pass rush, you got some stuff. So maybe defensive line, uh, front seven's doing well. Uh, you have an all right kicker, right? Tier four kicker. It could be worse there. Uh, not a great situation there for the Texans. Uh, moving on to the Lions and other, I mean, listen, none of these teams are in great situations. Uh, the Lions at least have, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a jump from the Texans. They have earned 1.5 wins despite winning zero games. So while they haven't won any games, they have been a bit unlucky and chances are they'll win a game or two down the stretch. Uh, I think there's a very real chance the Texans could still end up with the number one overall pick, although it could be the Lions too because they have that, you know, impressive one game lead. So we'll see. But for them, it's, you know, uh, again, Having a tier four quarterback helps a lot more than having a tier three quarterback, but neither one of them have much else. You know, receiving core actually hasn't been the worst in the league, but it hasn't been great. I feel like offensive lines may be a bit underrated, but, uh, you know, part of that has been injuries. So uh, we'll see about that. Uh, moving up to the Jets here, really good offensive line. Uh, and actually, their uh, quarterback play with Mike White and uh, Josh Johnson has actually gone up to tier four, which is, hey, there you go. That's something. Get you a win there. Without that, they're, you know, the number 31 team. So they at least have that going for them. Uh, they still have overperformed with two wins. I've only earned 1.6. Number 29 now, the Jacksonville Jaguars. So for the Jaguars, again, they got some talent on their offensive line. And I think their defense is going to get a little bit more talent due to that great performance by the Bills or against the Bills, I mean. Uh, but part of that, to me, I wonder is how much of that was Jaguars good and how much of that was a solid game plan and kind of the Bills beating themselves. It was certainly some of both. Another reason why the Jaguars have dropped a little bit is their running game in the past had been uh, a Tier 1. Uh, at Tier 2, it just doesn't get the value that you would like. So, you know, uh, there are some things there. But again, the Jaguars are in a rebuilding season, not a huge deal. 
next four here. So we have a couple of teams that some people still feel like could potentially be playoff teams. So starting with number 28, the Carolina Panthers. I mean, Sam Darnold has been all over the place this season. He at one point was a tier two quarterback via PFF grades, now down to tier five. Tier five O-line, tier five receiving core. Those have been rough for a while, and we kind of knew the O-line would suck. Receiving core is still a bit of a surprise, but, uh, you know, basically, when you're only getting 0.63 wins uh, on, with your, uh, you know, offense, you're not going to win much, and, and their defense is actually, you know, doing pretty well. So, the, you know, you can't really complain about the defense too much, but still, only 2.3 wins earned so far. The actual wins they have is four, so they've overperformed pretty significantly. Uh, if you see more than a one-win difference, that's a pretty significant jump. Usually, you're going to be within one win. Most teams end up within one win. Number 27, so the Washington football team, again, uh, very good across the board in terms of uh, defensive line. Uh, the defensive line and offensive line is what I meant to say is both doing really good. Tier one offensive line, tier two running uh, defense, and tier one pass rush and get some kicking help, but literally nothing else. You just can't win with that in today's NFL. Uh, and they're right where they should be. Uh, 2.1 wins earned, two actual wins. Number 26, this is a team that I just think, you know, it's fascinating because the same thing happened last year with the Steelers. They were a team that, you know, I, I ran these numbers last year just kind of to see how well does this work. And most teams are pretty accurate. And the teams that weren't, you can kind of explain your way into. One of the more surprising teams was the Pittsburgh Steelers in that they, you know, won 11 games, but kind of only, I think they were only expected to win about eight given my system. So the question is, uh, is there a flaw with the system? I would be inclined to say not inherently because they're the only type of team that is built like the Steelers that underperforms these past two years. So I don't think so. I think it's just that, you know, this system intentionally doesn't include coaching because there's no real way to include coaching. So because of that, coaching is going to, you know, make a difference. And I think that could be a part of it. I also think the Steelers have had some luck so far and probably aren't as good as their record would show. So I think that factors in as well. But still, uh, 2.7 uh, wins added uh, above expected. This is uh, the biggest jump in positive or negative out of any of the teams by a good margin. So that's very fascinating. Again, what the, the system doesn't love about them, they're built on their run defense and pass rush, but they can't cover. And you saw that in the Bears game when they made the Bears look pretty good, uh, largely due to their, just, their inability to cover. And once teams can kind of you know, uh, if you get enough time, you're going to get stuff open. There's just, there's no denying that. Uh, their quarterback play hasn't been great. Receiving play hasn't been great. Uh, run game hasn't been great. So all that stuff factors in as well. Uh, I don't think the Steelers are great, but they're probably going to be, uh, you know, their record's probably going to look solid for a while at least. But hey, who knows? Uh, could be wrong. Uh, I, I think that they could end up sneaking into playoffs, but I, I have a hard time seeing them do much if they do get there. Uh, number 25, you have the Giants who, you know, bad offensive line, decent quarterback play. Jones has been inconsistent. Uh, receiving core has been injured, so that's a big part of it. Defense has, you know, not awful, but definitely underwhelming. So uh, Giants are still here. They, you know, were shot up early on due to PFF starting the season with Jones as a tier one quarterback because he had a couple good games, which I don't totally disagree with. Uh, I, although I, I disagree with a little, but I don't think it's crazy to say that. Uh, although definitely he's fallen down to earth. We can all agree on that. Uh, so, you know, they've also, they've under, uh, they've overperformed a little bit, but not by much. Uh, this is kind of about where you'd expect them to be. All right, next four. Hey, you have the Miami Dolphins here uh, at number 24. Still no offensive line, but they're, you know, Tua's actually played solid. Like, he really has. He hasn't been great, but he's he's done some all right things. Tua is not the issue. Now, again, the whole question, I keep saying this, he might not be the issue. He also might be the problem, but at least you have something. Uh, to me, the biggest disappointment for them is like, okay, receiving core, tier four. That's not crazy. I expected them to be tier three heading into this season, so it's not a crazy underperformance. It's their defense. Really, their coverage, which you know has gotten burned a decent amount this season. We thought their coverage would be elite, and that would at least get them some more wins, but even that wouldn't be enough to make this team a playoff team, and they also have underperformed by about a win, so that factors in. We also have the Kansas City Chiefs, who were one of the teams that's actually, according to this system, overperformed pretty significantly, which is stunning because you would think that they're the other way around. And listen, 
you know, everyone uh, likes to try to find poke holes in this stuff. But one thing I, that I keep bringing up is, you know, using this system, using this algorithm far more often when I look at something and say, well, that makes no sense. Why is that the case? It either corrects in a week or it is just like that uh, forever and actually turns out to be true. Like the Kansas City Chiefs were, you know, basically, I think the highest they've been is like 15th this entire season. And now it kind of feels accurate. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, according to PFF, is has been a tier four quarterback so far. I, I still hold out hope that that'll turn around. Offensive line's tier one. So there you go. Uh, although, you know, part of that is they run blocked a lot better than they pass blocked. They can't really get a lot of that value, though, because they haven't ran the ball effectively with their backs. Uh, you know, defense hasn't been great. It also has had its moments, um, you know, specifically against Green Bay. You hope they can continue there. But uh, the drop of Mahomes, Mahomes needs to be a tier one quarterback and add three more wins to this team. Then they're a playoff team. Like that legitimately is the, you know, the difference here. And because they have overperformed this a little bit, uh, which maybe that's just Mahomes has actually been like a, a tier four quarterback or excuse me, a tier three quarterback, which would make it almost even. I think you could, you know, easily just say that. But regardless, fascinating stuff. We'll see if I, I'm still going to, quite frankly, if I have to bet on Mahomes or against Mahomes, I'm going to bet on Mahomes. Uh, you know, maybe that's just me paying too much attention to previous seasons. I'm of the belief people don't pay enough attention to the bigger sample size. People give in to uh, small sample size and, you know, uh, recency bias a bit too much, but that's just how I view things. And sometimes that comes back to bite me. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. Number 22, the Indianapolis Colts, who have started to climb pretty significantly, right? They were horrible. I think at one point they were like a bottom three team. They're now here at 22. So they've vastly improved, which we, which I actually said was probably going to happen because they were so injured early on, specifically with the O-line, which has gotten better. So, you know, with all this stuff, uh, with them getting healthier, it, it, checks out to me that you know you do have a situation where they're starting to look a little better their coverage still isn't good I mean they got lit up by the Jets uh they got lit up by Josh Johnson that's not good that's just it's not something you want to happen there still is some issues with this team but you know their coaching was good and listen they tore apart a bad Jets defense so you have that going for you uh, they, you know, have overperformed a little bit, but not by much. So, you know, seven wins right now, they can continue to get healthy and get better. This could potentially be a solid team, but they need to, to do that. And 21, the Atlanta Falcons who are, you know, I believe they're currently in a playoff spot right now. Uh, could be wrong about that, but they're right. They're right there. I mean, they're actually in playoff contention. Uh, Matt Ryan has quietly, I got to make a video on Matt Ryan. I, I keep meaning to, and he, I keep cutting it. I got to make one. I know, you know, Falcons videos don't do too well numbers wise, but I mean, he's earned a video. He's played really well. Uh, he's had some inconsistencies and people focus on the bad because he's older. And you know, when you're a quarterback who's older than 35, when you have two bad, two good games and then one bad game, people say you're washed up. Uh, when you're a young player and you have two good games and one bad game, people say you're, the sky is the limit, which, you know, I get it, but Ryan's the reason why this Falcons team is competent uh, in a large degree, and I think they've been well-coached as well, so uh, stuff to like here for the Falcons. They're still rebuilding, but, you know, uh, I think there's there's reason for some optimism if you're a Falcons fan, although, granted, uh, if you're a Falcons fan, uh, you, you know, you probably are going to hold off from getting too optimistic just because of your past, which is unfortunate. All right, so next grouping, we have three teams that have uh, underperformed, one team that has overperformed their wins uh, that they should have, uh, their wins earned. So first, the Bears, who actually jumped up a significant amount. A big part of this is, you know, one of the reasons for their jump was the run game turning into Tier 1. That's kind of the, you know, that's one of the, it is the biggest jump in between any tier. Uh, it's almost a two-win jump. So sometimes when you're that, like, you know, fringe uh, tier one, tier two halfback, you're going to have a good amount of variance week to week. And that's kind of why, you know, there can be some, some, some flukiness going on. So if you don't feel that's the case, then, you know, maybe you cut off a couple of wins here. But, you know, quarterback play has been steadily tier four. I think it did drop to tier five at one point, but has gone back up to tier four after Fields had a good game. And PFF loved his game. I thought he played well. Uh, they had him as like the best quarterback of week nine, which I was surprised by. But but he did play well. Um, you know, wide receiving play has shot up, which had been abysmal in the past. So those two things kind of do go together, right? Uh, wide receivers help out the quarterback, quarterback helps out the receivers, all of that stuff. Uh, defense still wasn't great, but we, we knew that. 
Uh, and offensive line's been fine. Offensive line has not been the issue with the Bears. So there you go. Team's looking better. Uh, number 19, you have the Seahawks who get Russell Wilson back. Russell Wilson, because he was so good when he played, even with Geno Smith, who wasn't abysmal himself, you do have an opportunity here to, you know, maybe uh, overperform what you've had so far. If that goes back up to tier one, then instead of being expected to get 8.3, you're expected to get, you know, a little bit over, uh, you know, nine wins at this point, which could be enough for a playoff spot, especially with the added team that could, you know, make things uh, easier. There still is some other stuff to like, but again, Russell Wilson is kind of the lifeblood of this team. Number 18, so the San Francisco 49ers have overperformed uh, what they've, or excuse me, they've underperformed what they are at currently, and they did this last year too, they underperformed, so if people are in the Kyle Shanahan sucks camp, well, this is some evidence to support that. You look at them across the board, they're not really bad at anything, and by bad, I mean horrible at anything. I mean, they don't have any uh, tier fives across the board, uh, and in fact, they don't have any tier fours across the board except for quarterback play, but unfortunately, that's the most important uh, part. Also, kicker, uh, but you know, uh, so those are the two tier fours they have. So they have kind of talent scattered ac across the board in a tier one offensive line. The issue is they just don't have anything else that they're really great at currently, so that's kind of where they're at. And, you know, the quarterback position is the most important position currently. Uh, number 17, you have the New Orleans Saints, which, you know, it's been interesting because Jameis Winston, the perception is that he played really well. PFF was not a crazy fan. They had him at tier four basically the entire uh, year. Trevor Simeon comes in and hasn't changed that grade in the one game he's played. Receiving core hasn't been horrible, according to PFF, although I, I'm still not a huge fan. Uh, they still play good defense. I think that, you know, tier one uh, run defense and tier two coverage, that checks out to me. Offensive line's been fine. It hasn't been as good as we've seen in seasons past, but it's still been fine. Uh, so that's kind of where this team is at. Currently, they're expected, you know, uh, they should have about four wins. They have five. They feel like, you know, a mediocre team to me. I think that checks out. The one interesting thing of note, though, is the, the running game. So they're currently at a tier two running game. But if you add an Alvin Kamara and you say he's tier uh, one, which I believe he's number six currently, only top five make the tier one grouping. Uh, so him at t uh, number six, that kind of, that, again, that changed about two wins. So I, I would probably put him at tier one. I think the Saints are probably a little bit better than this would show. Although I also think I would, you know, move the white receiving core down a little bit. So I think they're a little bit better than they show and are a fringe playoff team to me. All right, next four. So how about the Philadelphia Eagles, who they're one of the teams that's, uh, I believe they're the team that's underperformed the most. So that's 2.2 two wins. So that's a, a wild jump, quite frankly. I mean, you expect them to, I, you know, uh, I think there's explanations for this. So them and the Steelers actually had the same, you know, same jump, uh, although I rounded up. So I believe the Steelers are slightly ahead. Part of this is the tier one running game, which I just don't know if I fully agree with. I think they're probably tier two uh, or tier three. You get the same amount for either one. So uh, that alone, that kind of knocks them down to about, uh, you know, seven ish wins that would put them at around, you know, uh, 20th, 21st around there, which probably feels more right. Uh, quarterback play has been tier three. I think that's fair. I think Jalen Hurts has had his ups and downs. The problem is he there is a bit of a scheme dependency on him. When teams sort of drop back and play coverage, he does struggle more than when teams are, you know, coming after him. Uh, but the offensive line's played well, so you have that. There is some talent in the receiving core, so you have that. And there is some talent on defense. But, you know, uh, they're kind of just a, an odd team, I think, for the Eagles. Uh, they, you know, they feel like the good, best part about the Eagles is how many draft picks they have coming up. Number 15, so the Cincinnati Bengals, who, you know, I, I said this early on, they got a bit lucky, uh, and this is something that this chart, you know, graphed with the, uh, the Bengals early on, is they kind of seem to be a bit lucky. They've now fallen back to earth, but I would say at this point, they've, you know, according to this chart, that, you know, 5.3 wins earned, they have actually five wins, so they're about even now, which checks out, and them being even would be a 10 win football team, which would get you into the playoffs, which would be awesome for Cincinnati. Quarterback play has been good. I know Burrow has a bunch of interceptions, but you can't just look at the, the box score stats. I do think Burrow has been good. Not sure if he's tier two or tier three, but they gave him tier two. Uh, so there you go. Uh, receiving core has been very good. Uh, and, you know, th they block solid as well, which that was a big 
emphasis of concern heading into this season. Number 14, their division rivals, the Baltimore Ravens, who have overperformed relatively significantly, right? They've earned 4.6 wins. They actually have six, according to PFF. They've overperformed. But I don't think that that's true because I actually disagree with, uh, you know, the Lamar Jackson of it all. Lamar's not a tier three quarterback and the running game isn't uh, tier two or three. Either, I, I keep saying this every week, either their running game is tier one or Lamar Jackson is tier one. Uh, but again, like I, I still stand by, I agree with PFF on 99% of what they say, but the 1% tends to be the things that stand out in our mind more. So for me, the Ravens probably are actually uh, accurate to, you know, they're probably closer to the six win total than the 4.7 win total, but that's where the algorithm puts them. And, you know, uh, the algorithm has always had a hard time with Lamar. It just is what it is. Some guys are going to be a little bit difficult to track. There's no perfect system, but, you know, I like it. And speaking of no perfect system, let's go to number 13, the Denver Broncos, who are currently here ahead of like the Ravens, which again, that's going to be one of those people are going to say, oh, your system is dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. You moron, you buffoon. Well, okay, uh, hold on for a second. For one thing, like I do think that this is not true. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is a tier three quarterback. I think he's lower than that. So that's why they would drop off. I also think that you have to look at this and you have to look at this as a complete, uh, you know, sample size. It is not how we actually view about these players. It's what the value they've had through their eight or in this case, nine games. And I do think that it is fair with, you know, they've won five games. And I think that in those five games, they have looked pretty solid in them. Now they've had some bad moments as well, which is kind of why you have the, you know, the weird inconsistencies and a lot of tier three stuff. Tier one wide receiving core. Don't know if I agree with that, but it it is good. So uh, again, for me, I would probably put this team closer to like, you know, eight wins or so. But uh, again, if they keep playing the way they have played, which I just don't know if they can, but if they could, this could still be a playoff team. Realistically, though, I, I would bet on probably not. But like I said in the past, teams that consistently uh, overperform or underperform my expectations in this tend to actually go closer to the algorithm than go closer to what I predict in the future. So we'll see. All right, next four here. So the Chargers at 12, they're pretty, mu pretty much exactly where they should be with five wins, 4.9 wins earned right he here. So interesting stuff there. Tier one quarterback play from Justin Herbert. So, uh, you know, big fans of Justin Herbert over there at PFF. I don't quite know about that, but if that's the case, you know, maybe he should be an MVP consideration given what he means to this team. I mean, they're uh, expected to win 10 games, but, you know, basically almost 40% of their expected wins are because of Herbert. The offensive line uh, has played very well on top of that. Receiving core has been solid. Uh, and then, you know, they cover well. Part of that is scheme, though. Like, you know, they intentionally don't stop the run, right? That That's like an intentional decision. And if they were more, if they were more talented at stopping the run, I think they could be, uh, you know, a, a better team because teams can run on them. But at the same time, there's kind of some logic to that. So, Fascinating team with the Chargers. Uh, that's where they're at. Number 11. So you have the Green Bay Packers right here who dropped a significant amount last week. And again, they're kind of a team that's they fluctuated a bit because of the Aaron Jones 2.5 tier one uh, running grade. And if you're someone who believes that Aaron Jones is a tier one running back or just their running game in general is tier one, because, you know, I talk about the starters, but it's not just the starters. It's also AJ Dillon. To me, I do think this is a fair grade. I think they should be tier one. So I, I like this better than if they, you know, last week when they were tier two. Another thing people have, you know, com keep complaining about is the Aaron Rodgers tier three. Well, can't complain about it this week because Aaron Rodgers didn't play. It was Jordan Love who did not, uh, you know, change that too much. And like I say, uh, every week, even though people still don't listen to this, I do not make the grades. I do not decide what tiers each uh, group is in. That is not up to me. I just decide how many wins each tier deserves. So uh, that's how that works. But yeah, I mean, there's talent on this team. They're looking like a good team. They're definitely looking like a playoff team and they've over overperformed a little bit so far. And I don't know how much of that is luck because some of it is definitely going to be Matt LaFleur is a really damn good football coach. So that also factors in. Number 10, the Cleveland Browns who are here at number 10 without 
registering a tier one running game. It's, you know, a lot of talented stuff. The coverage is a big aspect. I mean, their their defense has the most wins any defense currently has, according to this system, which I think the defense has been really good. It's had its rough patches, but it's also had its really good patches. So it goes both ways for their defense. Meanwhile, their offense, Baker's, you know, uh, a tier, been a tier three quarterback, which that's what he is. And honestly, the Odell thing is probably addition by subtraction a little bit. Uh, although their receiving core being tier three, you still, you were hoping that would be better heading into the season. The talent was better, but the Odell thing just unfortunately didn't work out. Offensive line's very good. Uh, this is a team that, you know, if you believe that they should have a tier one running game, that instantly jumps them up to like championship contender. Like that's really where they're at. The question just is, you know, do you believe in that? And do you believe in all these numbers? I kind of do. I think the Browns are legit. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, they've underperformed a little bit, but not massively so far now. They have that fifth win. They're looking better. Number nine, how about them Cowboys? Uh, they've overperformed a little bit, but nothing massive. Uh, you know, 0 0.8. That's that's in the range of what you expect a team to underperform or overperform. Uh, tier one receiving game, uh, tier two quarterback play, tier one offensive line. That's going to do very well. Uh, and you could argue they have a tier one running game, which means they should be a championship contender, right? Them and the Browns kind of both have that in common if you believe they have a tier one running game. Didn't have their best week against the Broncos. A lot of that was just good play calling by Denver. A lot of that was, you know, quite frankly, uh, just some miscues by Dallas. So whatever way you want to, you know, uh, phrase that, whatever way you want to take that, that's kind of how it is. Uh, Cowboys still good. Number uh, eight here. So we're moving on to the next four. You have the Buffalo Bills, who, again, Josh Allen currently has been a tier three quarterback uh, given, given PFF's grades, I know people just say, ah, PFF hates Josh Allen. Uh, and first off, obviously they don't like hate Josh Allen. They might not believe in Josh Allen, but that doesn't mean you hate him. Uh, but, uh, I, I do think that there is some truth to this. Like Allen has looked very, he's had, he's had his bad games this season, right? And again, we're not taking this off of who we think Josh Allen is over his career. We're just using the sample size that we have, you know, through nine weeks. Uh, the one baffling thing about the Bills is their 2.5 uh, run uh, wins added through their running game, which I, I just don't get. I, I'm just, I'm baffled by that. I don't get how that's tier one. Uh, but the rest of this, like, I think it's fine. The receiving core hasn't been spectacular this season, and that is kind of a bit of a concern. Defense has been awesome, but if this team is going to win a championship, it's going to be because of their defense and because of their uh, quarterback. Who knows? Maybe they could be an, an Odell team. Maybe we'll know that by the time I post this video on Wednesday. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Number seven, you have the Tennessee Titans who currently, uh, you know, have overperformed a little bit. But what I keep saying is part of the overperformance is because currently they have a tier two running back grade, but obviously they had Derrick Henry for as long as they had him. So that was tier one for those games and it's just fallen down a little bit. So that's kind of where the system can get a bit wonky, I would say. Uh, but still, they've been covering very well. Don't do a lot else well on defense, but listen, you'll get pressures if you can cover. Uh, and that's kind of what's happened a lot with the Titans, I think, although a lot of people view it the other way around, um, which is just you know, it's the data doesn't, there's no data to support that it's the other way around. Maybe another surprise is the tier one Ryan Tannehill. I don't know if he's tier one, but he's tier two at least. So, and he has played very well this season. Uh, he didn't get to do too much because that game was over quick against the Rams. Titans are a team that keep answering the bell. Uh, and we'll see if they keep doing it. Number six. Uh, so I, I messed up earlier when I said that, you know, I talked about the two teams that have overperformed or underperformed the most. This is actually the team with the highest disparity. I wasn't, I forgot about the Vikings. Uh, 2.4 wins less than they have earned, that their talent has earned. Uh, part of that is, you know, PFF gives Kirk Cousins a tier one quarterback grade, uh, which listen, he's had some awesome games. I'd probably put him at tier two this season, but he has had some really good games. So it's, it's not as crazy as some people might think. Uh, the receiving core has been good, but I mean, you, you think about it, okay, their offense is built on their quarterback and receiving core. So what do they do? They build their offense on their running game. So uh, coaching can definitely uh, create some big impacts. The Vikings are a team that continues to underperform their talent. Uh, PFF says they you know, play defense well. I don't know how well, but that's what they say. So uh, maybe I disagree with a couple of grades, but they've still definitely underperformed their talent. 
Uh, number five, so you have the Las Vegas Raiders, who dropped a little bit. Uh, they dropped uh, out of the top four, but they're still a good team. The offensive line sucks. Uh, it's so bad, but uh, the rest of their team is very good. They cover incredibly well. Derek Carr has a quarterback two tier grade, uh, but you know that could easily be tier one. Receiving core has been tier one now, which I thought was a weakness heading in, uh, but then again, the Henry Ruggs stuff, how much does that hurt? I don't know. They rushed a passer well on top of this, so this is a team that just has a lot of stuff they do incredibly well, and the things they don't do particularly well, run defense and O-line, you can win without. The question is just, can you win you know, against great teams without that? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Top four, the uh, elite four, although one team is going to make people say, um, I'm not sure. Uh, there. Wait, wait, what? So uh, we'll talk about that number two team in a second, but let's, you know, go chronologically. Number four, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here with a tier two offensive line. Brady has, I mean, Brady's been, been awesome this season. To me, the, if I'm thinking MVP candidate, uh, I, I, I've gone back and forth every week because there have been so many candidates, but it's probably Brady for me. I, I really think so. Like, and, and maybe that's just I'm a Bucks fan and my, you know, subconscious bias is coming into play. I think he has a really good argument for it. Really good receiving core. Should be tier one. It's tier two. Part of that has been injuries, whatever. Uh, I'm tired, tired of talking about that every week. Uh, coverage has actually, you know, looked well. Part of it is what I've had so many injuries. Jamal Dean's stepped up very nicely. I know PFF loves Jamal Dean. I think he has played well. Uh, rest of the defense isn't spectacular, but there's some other value here. Uh, so, you know, currently at 12.17 wins projected. Uh, they've, you know, uh, overperformed barely by 0 0.3. So they're right where they should be at. Number three, you have the Arizona Cardinals who have overperformed, but also have played well. Uh, Kyler Murray uh, has done a lot very well. And even when Colt McCoy came in, he played well himself. Receiving core has been awesome. Uh, although, you know, you hope Hopkins is uh, back sooner rather than later. Uh, offensive line has been you know, good enough. And they cover well. So th those are kind of the main things. They cover well and they pass well. And it's a passing league. So you do that stuff, you're going to have success. Number two. Okay, let's just get into it. Because what the hell is happening here? How in the world are the Patriots number two? And this is a team that this uh, grading system has completely... Uh, they've loved the Patriots week after week. Even when the Patriots were, I think, like, uh, what was it? Two and four. Uh, this grading system was having the Patriots as a playoff team. What it looked like a playoff team. Are they a championship contender? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's just get into why they're graded this way. It's because they have you know, solid offensive line, good quarterback, good receiving. You know, both of those are tier two and that 2.5 run defense. That alone, it's going to get you a lot. That gives you about seven, you know, with those three and also their coverage, that's five wins right there. So that alone, or excuse me, that's 10 wins right there. If that was only five, would not be as impressive. Yeah, so that's, you know, around 10 wins right there. You add on some more for their kicking, uh, for their run defense, and for their offensive line. That puts them at nearly 13 wins. They've underperformed. Uh, that's what happened. But again, you think about some of the way these games have gone. Like they missed that field goal against the Buccaneers. They probably should have beaten the, the Dolphins. You can say that for every team, but it's actually not as crazy as you think. I do think the Patriots are good. I don't know if they're the second best team in football, but I do think that they're a very good team. And at number one, with a bullet, the Los Angeles Rams, who are right on the money. They're, they've earned seven wins. They've won seven games. So there you go. Uh, offensive line's been awesome. Stafford only tier three, which is fascinating because, you know, uh, I'm making an analytical video. A lot of people in the analytics community constantly say you need that tier one quarterback or a good quarterback on a cheap contract. Uh, the Rams do not necessarily have that with Stafford, but I've always kind of maintained, okay, you don't need that. It makes it a lot easier if you have a tier one quarterback or a great quarterback on a rookie contract or, you know, preferably a tier one quarterback on a rookie contract. That would make it, you know, a lot better. But you don't need that necessarily. Like the Rams, they have a tier one receiving core that helps them out a ton, especially with a great offensive minded head coach, uh, running game that gets you some points and defense that gets you a lot of points. Uh, so that all that stuff together, uh, you know, hey, tier one kicking too. kickers are people too. kickers matter. 
all that stuff combined, I think that, you know, the Rams are good. Rams currently at number one. I will say, though, there's there it tends to be a number one curse. It seems like whoever's number one loses the following week. So we'll see if that happens with the Rams. Uh, interesting stuff. We're not going to agree with all of it, but it, it's always fun, I think. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, uh, thanks for watching.